Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is another episode of Officer Extra. I'm your host, Officer Extra, and joining me is... Elisa. And Elisa, you uh, live here, is that correct? Yep. You're going to let us go up there and see if everything's like safe and clean and whatnot? If you want to go up there for a safety inspection. Can we go in the bathroom? I don't understand the point of the mirror right in front of the toilet. That's kind of gross, to be honest. <laughs> And so I think it's a little strange to go ahead and put a mirror directly in front of your toilet. But you know. Where else are we supposed to put it? Anywhere else. Any, absolutely anywhere else. If you take a look here, Lisa, look, you're walking by and you try to get into the room and look, you get crushed. I see you got your dresser over here and uh, you got shoes up on the rack. This is my roommate. Oh, this is your roommate's. You're right. Let's go ahead and go look at yours. Okay. Why would you put dirty <laughs> shoes up on the rack? You're going to be dirty and you're going to be smelly. No one's going to like you if you're smelly. I had a very hard time in middle school because of that. What do we got up here? So we can like take something down and yeah, then... Yeah, that is my collection of... Uh, see, that could have fallen right on my head. It's a good thing I got a hot hat on. This is my collection of plastic bags. That's not a safe lamp. Look at this. What kind of, what kind of bulb is that? Do you see this? Is this thing even on? Does this thing work? You can break the glass. The glass will get in your eye and you can't see anything. Way to go. Way to go. You just lost an eyeball. What is this thing? Oh, that's for my sister when she comes up tomorrow because it's her birthday today. Oh, that's nice. What in the... Holy... What the... Do you see this? What is this? A heating Don't interrupt me. What? I'm not asking you the but question, Sierra. You're the that. camera it's person. Shoot the video. Don't understand what a heating pad is. Why is it on the floor? Were you warming the floor up? This is the worst design room I've ever seen. The bed is set to five feet high, so you can put your desk and your dresser underneath. Um, I don't see a desk or a dresser. What's going on she over here? What, like she likes to come down here and this is her kitchen? Elisa, where are we now? We're in the active lounge on the fifth floor. All right, let's go ahead and turn this on. Oh, look at that, everybody. This is not, it's got a gooseneck on it. Did I break it? How come nothing's coming out of it though when I, Elisa? We're down here on the first floor. What is this over here? A shuffleboard table. What do you do with shuffleboard? You play shuffleboard. Please say something helpful for once. Shuffleboard is a game where you take a puck and you slide it across the table and you try to get the most points. All right, show me how this works. I got two points. You got two points. Now, yeah. what if I can knock your puck out of the way? Yeah, look at that, now nobody's the winner. <laughs> Welcome to Beacon Hall, everybody. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at all the first floor amenities. Why is there no sticker on this glass? I could hurt myself. Furniture's not put together. Did you do this? Of course not. Thank you so much for showing me around, Elisa. It was a pleasure. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Okay, everyone, it's about time for everyone's favorite show, USF, USF Housing Live. Gregory Bowers, Sierra Rose, Maxwell Morinelli, Elisa Goldberg, Nyreen Naomi, Courtney Cadogan, Geraldine Paredes, June Dickens, Jeremy Lamberti, Taylor Finke, Kayla Williams, Burley Gomez, Chris Herrera, Stephanie Jockman. Wednesday, June 27th, 2018. Coming to you from the beautiful University of South Florida campus in Tampa, it's USF Housing Live! Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. This is USF Housing Live. I'm your host, Gregory Bowers, with Housing and Residential Education at the beautiful University of South Florida in Tampa. Our motto, best place to live, best place to work, best place to learn. Tonight's episode is Get a Job. I should also mention, this is a very special one-hour episode featuring an amazing studio audience. How are you doing, audience? Yeah. Now, I want to let you know that three students have been randomly selected to join us on the set tonight to play for fabulous prizes and, at the very least, to up their fame game. We will also have three experts on the program this evening who will help prepare you to live the bull's life. As always, ask us anything and we will answer you during the show. If you have a question, no matter where or how you are watching, just type it in the comments and we will answer you in real time. Okay, bulls, it's game show time. Are we ready, audience? Yeah. 
All right. So let's meet our first contestant. Hey, what's your name? My name's Lance. Lance, welcome to the program. So where are you from? I'm from a small town called Rockledge, Florida, near Cocoa Beach on the East Coast. All right. Well, very happy to have you here. And got to ask you, are you ready for this? Kind of. <laughs> yeah, we didn't tell you what this is. Lance has no idea what's about to happen. So Lance, here we go. Our first game is called Bring It. So Lance, we are going to hand you a number of different items, and you're going to tell me if it's something that you should or should not bring to your residence hall on campus. Audience, feel free to help Lance out, and here we go. Let's get our first item. Okay, Lance, what is it you have there? Um, a stuffed rabbit with crumply okay. ears. A stuffed, <laughs> a stuffed rabbit designed to delight the ears. So do you bring your stuffed rabbit with you? Um, I did not. You did not? Do you think it's okay to bring to the hall? It definitely is okay if it makes you more yeah. comfortable. Okay. Audience says bring it. It's okay to bring it. All right. <laughs> Let's see our next item for Lance. Lance, what do you got there? Uh, I think it's a shower caddy. Okay, you got a or shower you, caddy. You put your bathroom toiletries in it. So is that something to bring to campus? Yes. All right, that's a yes. All right, I'll agree with you on that. Very good. All right, next thing, what have you got? Sparklers. Sparklers. And so right, should you bring sparklers to the residence hall? Mm, probably no. not. No, no, no. That's right. If it catches fire, uh, if it's like purpose is to catch fire, probably a no. Yeah. So that's a no, definitely. All right, what else have we got for Lance over there? Tennis balls. Tennis balls. Do you bring your tennis balls? I did bring tennis balls. Oh, so you play tennis? Yes, I do. That was total luck of the draw, folks. Yeah. We did not plan for that. That's good. Yeah, you can bring tennis balls. They are still allowed as of the last writing of our resident handbook. By the way, resident handbook at usf.edu slash housing. Click on resources and then policies. All right. Thank you for helping me with that shameless plug, Lance. What else have we got for you? A planner. So, should you bring a planner? Uh, definitely. You say bring a planner. Audience? Bring it. Well... Actually, Lance, I got to tell you, I don't know if you really need to bring a planner because we're going to get you a planner from student government. They provide planners for all residents and all students, excuse me, here on campus. So you actually don't need to bring one. Trick question. I know. I'm sorry. Let's go to our next item there. Mm. What flip have you flops. got? Flip flops? Okay. Do you yes. need to bring flip flops? Uh, you can. If you want to go to the beach, you did go any to Castor Beach? You Castor Beach, flops. beautiful Castor Beach. We are sitting right in front of Castor Beach right now, actually. Well, you are. All right. So, audience, do you bring flip flops to campus? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Definitely good to bring. Make sure you get out there. Castor Beach is the number one rated beach on campus. So definitely go visit can uh, go visit Castor Beach. Okay. Our next item. What have you got there? A candle. A candle. That's Ooh, a, that's a no go. Some, that's a for no. In the halls. Why is that a no? It's a fire hazard. That's right. That's right, we don't like uh, random fires, and so it might smell nice, but you can smell it off campus. Okay, so let's see what else you got there, Lance. All right. Teriyaki, teriyaki noodle soup. All right, let's hold that up for the camera so everyone can see that as well. So do you need to bring your noodle bowl, your ramen? You know, yes, you do. Did you bring any ramen noodles with you? I did bring ramen noodles with me. Let's check in with our audience. Show of hands, anyone bring ramen with them? Bring the ramen noodles, yeah? yeah. Not the healthiest choice every day. I don't want to upset my wellness partners, but yes, you can bring ramen that is allowed in the residence halls. Okay, let's check out our next item. All right, what have you got there? An umbrella. An umbrella. Um, <laughs> Careful, Devin. We, all, yeah, we almost impaled Devin. All right, so, um, so do you bring your umbrella? I should have. Oh, you didn't bring an umbrella. I did not, and then it's rained practically every day since yeah. we've been here. We can hear thunder right now, so. actually. And so how about we give you that umbrella to take with you today? Would you like to keep that? Thank you. I would like That's to. That's great. Okay, excellent. And so we've got, we've got one more item for you, Devin. And so let's see. Is this something that Devin should bring? <laughs> Not Devin. And so, oh, sorry, sorry, Lance. I was look, look, Devin was staring at me from off camera there. Lance, Devin, you can help out too. Do you need to bring a pillow, Devin slash Lance? Yes, you need a pillow. You need to bring a pillow? Should you, do you have a pillow here on campus, everybody? Yeah. Gotta bring your pillow. How about you take that home with you too? Okay, thank All you. All right, so you got an umbrella and a pillow to take home with you. Let's hear it for Lance for playing with us tonight. <laughs> So Lance, thank you so much, and please stick around here. We're going to be talking with uh, Devin. It's time to speak with Devin Diddleberger from Housing and Residential Education's Housing Services Office. So Devin, how are you doing tonight? Doing well, Greg. How are you? I'm doing well. Happy to have you here. I'll try not to call you Lance. I don't know if Sounds I mixed good. everybody Sounds up. Good. So we'll it see. All the time. Well, it does happen all the time. And so <laughs> Devin, tell me, what is it you do here? I'm the Housing Services Coordinator. So my biggest role is to manage the three 24-hour desks we have on campus that provide students to our residents who live on campus. 
I also help prepare for um, Grand Move-In and the different transitions each semester to make sure everyone gets to the correct room and moves out and in in a timely fashion. All right, awesome. And so you were once a student employee here, and I want you to tell us a little bit about your journey from being a student employee with housing to now. Yeah, I was a student employee here at housing. I got the bug and decided I want to work in higher education. And so after I graduated, um, I went off to grad school in Ohio, tested out the snow for a little bit, decided that was not for me, and luckily found my way back here at home, which is USF. And I'm really, really happy to be here, and I've really enjoyed it so far. I'm learning a lot in this new role. Awesome. Well, we're very happy to have you, and snow is cold and scary. Yeah, yeah. And so you're pretty safe. It can't yeah. get you here. It's not fun to drive in. Like <laughs> not at all. And so, Devin, tell us about some of the services provided by the Housing Services Unit. Yeah, so we manage all the mail services here on campus. So if parents or students are mailing packages from Amazon or um, care packages before finals, we manage all of that. We also manage all the desk operations, so lockouts for rooms, temporary access cards for building access, and then new room assignments. So room changes, um, end of the semester, beginning of the semester, we manage all of that as well. Now, Devin, the majority of students uh, that work in housing residential education actually work in housing services. And so could you tell us a little bit about the types of jobs available to them? Yeah, within our area, um, the three big ones are the mail services clerk. So if you enjoy packages and cataloging, everything that comes in and out, that's a great job for you. And then we also have desk clerk. Um, and so those are desk clerks at 24-hour operation. So we need a lot of desk clerks each semester. Um, so that's a great entry-level opportunity. And then after you've worked with us for a little while, we have a promotional opportunity called the Desk Operations Assistant. All right, awesome. And so when do those jobs, when do they post for everyone? Uh, uh, we hire one, around once a year. So we usually post in January or February and then um, make selections in March and April. All right, excellent. Good to know. And so let's talk about grand opening. What is grand opening and when is it? Yeah, grand opening is uh, April 16th or August 16th this year. It's a Thursday. And it's a great culmination of the campus coming together to welcome all of our new students. It's where you get your key, get to meet your roommates all at the same time. Uh, the most important reason to come to Grand Opening is you get to connect and do week of welcome right away. So not only do you get to move into your room and get situated, but you get to attend one of the biggest events on campus, the kickoff with the huge balloon drop and President Genshaft, and Rocky will be there too, so we can't miss that. Of course, that's awesome, definitely. And so uh, tell me a little bit about uh, support students might receive to help them move in. Yeah, we have Bowl Hall, um, so that's a program we do every year where Students, current students, can apply to help students move in, um, much like U-Haul, but we're Bulls, so Bull Hall, go Bulls. <laughs> All right, and so uh, you got to tell me a little bit about what's different about living on campus when we think about the resources available to our residents. Yeah, I think the biggest difference is the mutual, um, the mutual connection between our residents and the student success, and so um, we're really invested not only as you as in your living environment, but your success here on campus. So we have a lot of support programs, like our faculty and residents, and um, the RAs who are there to mentor you throughout the year. So that one-on-one -on -one connection is really going to help you get that degree and hopefully that job later on. Cool. You were an RA before, right? Yes, I was. I was an RA too. I think there are RAs everywhere. Every, we are everywhere. And so what skills did that give you to prepare you for working at the professional level? Probably the most important is just um, crisis management and flexibility were the two biggest ones. Um, and just being able to handle anything that life throws at me because the RA position is very versatile in what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Awesome. And so we have a lot of family members that are watching tonight. They watch every episode. And so this transition from high school to college isn't just for the student. We know that it impacts the family as well. What advice do you have for family members as they prepare to have their student move from home to USF? Yeah, my biggest advice would be don't be afraid to let go and let your student make a few mistakes during their first semester. They're going to learn from them and become a better person because of that. So, you know, don't shelter them too much. Give them that space to kind of explore um, their identities and uh, who they want to be in their adult life. That's great. Devin, thank you so much. Devin Diddleberger, everybody. Thank, thank you, Devin. Thank you. <laughs> and so also, I want to let folks know it is time for us to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. This next video, warning, it's a little scary. That's all I'm going to say. You don't want to miss it. We will be back with more USF Housing Live right after this. Hey, Bulls. Catch up on episodes you may have missed and see what's coming up by visiting usf.edu slash housing. Select About Us, then USF Housing Live. Choose an episode and get ready to live the bull's life. I know, she said dorm.
We're on it, okay? Yes. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yes, sir, I'll release the hounds. South Florida is our school, our home, where the Bulls live at the heart of it all. Contribute to USF traditions and leave your mark. Countless residential events and involvement opportunities challenge our residents to lead the greater community, to become global citizens. Achieve excellence in a living, learning community. Expand your horizons. With classes outside your front door or even down the hall, your success is well within reach. Opportunity awaits you. Experience the best place to live, the best place to work, and the best place to learn. Live the Bulls life. Welcome back, welcome back everyone. This is USF Housing Live. I'm Gregory Bowers, you're not, and wow, that was a scary video. Just saying. I don't know if that'll actually happen, but why test it? Uh, so I highly doubt that it's gonna happen in real life, um, but we just wanna uh, scare everyone because it's fun. All right, so I wanna mention that though I'm sure you always pay close attention to our experts, you wanna pay extra special attention to our next guest, Peter Thorsett, from Career Services. That's all I'm saying. And so we're going to get to Peter in just a moment. But I do have a few things that have come in from online. So Mackenzie said, I see you, Taylor. And Morgan said, hey, Tay Pearl. And Noah said, go, Tay Pearl. So whoever Taylor is has some fans watching. Uh, Rachel asked, does each room in Pinnacle have their own thermostat? The answer is yes, Rachel. And so Michaela said, does Magnolia Apartments have cleaning staff that cleans the bathrooms? If you live in traditional style, your bathroom is cleaned every day, Monday through Friday. If you live in a suite style, your bathroom is cleaned once a week and they take out the bathroom trash. And if you live in apartment style, your bathroom is cleaned twice a semester. But please, clean your bathroom more often than twice a semester. I want you to make friends and keep them. Someone comes out of that dirty bathroom and they're like, we can't have a relationship anymore. So uh, please make sure you maintain that. Uh, and also, I see you sent hearts for eyes emoji. It's kind of weird when it's just written out. But please, keep those questions and shout outs coming. We're talking with Peter Thorsett from Career Services. So Peter, tell us, what is it you do here at USF? So thank you, Greg, for having me back on the show. Um, I'm excited to be here. Um, I am the Communications and Marketing Officer for the newly created Division of Community Engagement and Career Readiness. We now incorporate all of the major areas that are going to help our students with long-term career success, both while they're here at the university and when they graduate. So it includes career services, the Office of Internships and Career Readiness, and our Community Engagement and Partnerships Office. Awesome. And I forgot to mention this. Peter, this is your fourth time on the program, isn't it? That's right. This is my fourth time here on Housing Live. So I'm very excited to be here. This is a great program and a really great service for our students and for our prospective students who are moving on campus to learn about all the great things that the offices offer to them while they're here at USF. Well, thank you, Peter. That's lovely. And so very happy. I hope we'll get you back for season five then. Got to yeah. keep this train rolling. And so, uh, Peter, can you tell us a little bit more about what Career Services does, specifically for our incoming students, our new bulls on campus? Yeah, absolutely. So our office, uh, in particular the Career Services office, um, is an office on campus that can help students as they're trying to figure out, first of all, are they in the right major? So there are a lot of services that we offer that will help them determine is this major right for me? And if it is the right major, then we help them to start to figure out what are some of the things that they need to do in order to be successful with that major when they graduate. We also offer a lot of assistance in terms of finding jobs, uh, both part-time while they're here on campus as well as full-time when they graduate. Our offices also help with internships and we offer a number of events and programs like career fairs to help our students connect with employers so that they can find those jobs and internships. All right, excellent. So you gotta tell us, what is FWS and how does that work? So FWS is really important for our students. It stands for Federal Work Study. And Federal Work Study, or FWS, is a type of financial aid. So the first thing our students are gonna to need to do is log into OASIS and check to see if they've been given an FWS award. And so they'll see that in their list of uh, different types of financial aid. And if they have that, the very first thing they need to do is they need to make sure they've accepted that award in OASIS. 
Once they've done that, this is a special kind of award. You actually have to work to earn the money that's been awarded to you. The cool thing is, is you don't have to pay it back. So as you earn that money, it's kind of yours to keep. You never have to pay it back. It's not like a loan, but you will need to look for a job. And the way you do that is you go to careers at USF uh, off of the main uh, USF website. You'll find those jobs that are tagged as FWS. You'll apply for those, and then you get to work in a number of different offices and departments on campus doing some kind of really cool things. Now, are there other part-time employment opportunities available to our students? Yeah, there are two types of part-time employment that we can help students with while they're here at USF. The first is on-campus uh, student employment. Uh, again, those jobs will also be posted in careers at USF. Uh, they'll look for non-FWS or student employment types of positions. Again, all kinds of jobs across campus. I know that here uh, in housing, uh, you have a team of, of student employees uh, that work with you on the production of this program and on marketing and communication. So lots of jobs like that across campus. We also work with employers who are within a short distance of campus, either on the Bull Runner line or within walking or easy driving distance. Um, and the reason we work with those two types of employers is because those are going to be supervisors who understand what it's like to be a student. They're going to understand that you've got exams, you've got group projects, you have to go to class. Um, and so they're ready to work with you to do flexible scheduling and make sure that you have the opportunities you need to earn that paycheck. Maybe that's to help pay for living on campus, right? to pay for your food, to pay for your books, um, those types of things, but also to make sure that you're successful in your studies. And so, Peter, you got to tell us, what is My Plan, My Pathways all about? So My Plan, My Pathways is a program here at USF that we're really excited about. It's, um, we often talk about it being kind of like a BuzzFeed set of quizzes. Uh, they're a little more scientific than that. Um, but they allow you as a student to go online and complete these assessments. And they tell you a lot about who you are from a personality perspective, what are some of the things that you value um, in the workplace or out of a future career. And then with those results, you can work with the career consultants in our office to understand how that aligns with your major um, and to make sure that you're on the right track to do something that you're going to be happy with once you graduate from college. All right, excellent. So you got to tell us, I'm sure people are wondering, where is Career Services located? So Career Services is located in the Student Services Building, or the SVC. Uh, if you've been on campus before and you know where undergraduate admissions is, or you know where the financial aid office is at, those are two important offices, we're in that same building upstairs on the second floor. And also right next to our office is our suitable location. That's a clothing lending service that's available to students for free. It allows them to buy, uh, borrow professional attire for no cost. They can use that for class projects, for interviews, for all sorts of things where they would need maybe a suit and tie or, or a really nice dress or outfit uh, for those types of experiences. Um, and we also have interview suites up there, which are really cool. So if you've got a Skype interview or a phone interview and you need a quiet place to do that, you can actually come up and check out a room from us and actually do that to do your interview. That is so very cool. So if a student out there doesn't have the cleanest room, not that that ever happens, but if they were to, they can go and check that out at Career Services then. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, you want to put your best foot forward. And so, and that includes the space that you're in. So if you do have that Skype interview or you have that phone interview, you need that quiet place or a clean place to do that from, we offer those to you. And again, that's all free for our students. That's excellent. So uh, thinking of internships, we talk all the time about internships are so important as a part of the college experience. When can students start seeking internships and how do they secure one? So that's a great question. So with our new division, we have a brand new Office of Internships and Career Readiness, um, and that team is ready to help students find internships once they're ready for that experience. So we typically encourage students to start thinking about internships in their sophomore year. Um, if you're a freshman and you're ready for that experience and you know that you're kind of in the right major and that's your right occupational track, uh, we're definitely not going to turn you away. We're there to help you uh, to identify those opportunities and to pursue those. Um, but really, we encourage students to come in to see us to talk about what it is that they want to accomplish, and then we help to start to match them to those opportunities with our handshake system. That's excellent. And so i got to ask, all these services you've spoken about tonight, what's the cost? So for our students, it is a big bet zero. So they don't pay anything. That's included in as part of your tuition and fees here at USF. So uh, students from the moment they're admitted to the university until the moment they graduate can use all of our services for free. For the first year after graduation, they can continue to use all of those services for free. And then for the lifetime, once you've become an alum of USF, certain services remain free, like our handshake system, which is where you can find jobs and internships, um, as well as some of our uh, online services are also available to students and alumni for free. That's excellent. So is there anything else you'd like to share? 
I think the big thing for us is we want to encourage students to start using our services as soon as they get here to USF. Um, you know, I think a lot of students think, oh, I don't need to find a job or, or worry about that kind of stuff until I'm ready to graduate. And the sooner you start working with our office, the sooner we can make sure you have the skills um, and the resources you need to be successful when you graduate. So we encourage you, come visit us early. We're a really fun office to, to come visit, take advantage of what we have to offer you. And again, it doesn't cost you anything. You're already paying for it. So come on in and see us. We got a question here from Ravarier uh, Seaman uh, is asking, what employment opportunities are available for international students? So that's a great question. International students in a lot of ways are limited um, in terms of the type of work that they can do here while they're on student visas. So one of the things we encourage our international students to do is to come into our office um, and to talk to us um, because there are certain on-campus positions that an international student can do. Um, they're much more limited in terms of off-campus opportunities and those have to be really closely aligned with their major or their occupational goals um, and that's all regulated um, by the federal government. So for international students we encourage them come find us, come talk to us and we'll help them navigate that process. All right, excellent. And uh, Lily asks, is it suggested that first year students work their first semester? So that's also a great question. One of the things that we strongly encourage students to think about their first semester, really their first year here at USF is, if you're comfortable with that transition and you feel like you've arrived here and you've got that down and you're going to classes and you're you're really kind of making progress towards your academic goals, then incorporating a part-time job can be a, an important part of that experience. If you need to work as a freshman and you're not as sure about that transition, we encourage you especially to look at on-campus employment. If you have that FWS award, take advantage of it. If you don't, look for student employment because those supervisors are going to be the most accommodating for you and they're going to be the most likely to work for you as you continue to make that transition. All right, excellent. i got to transition to some shout outs we've been getting here. I think our audience is pretty popular. Let's see what we got. Okay, Jacob said, Nate, Team Integrity. Uh, from orientation. Aaron says, hey, Marissa, looking good in that audience. Anna said, go, Katie, you look amazing. Wow, Katie, Katie, Katie. Uh, and so um, Sarah said, woo, Emily, Emily, Katie, Marissa, Taylor, are incredible, with a pun, all caps, yelling. Uh, <laughs> Charles said, yay, Elisa, Elisa G. Jacob said, talk about handshake and how do I get a USF lapel pin? And so you chase down Peter, he has pockets full of them, I'm pretty sure. Is that right, Peter? We have lapel pins just over in the office, so come see us. It's an incentive to come oh. and find our office. Go to Career Services and get a go. pin. I like that. You are slippery. <laughs> All right, so um, Susan said, Michael B. is rocking the back row. Great show. And Eric asked, are there FWS jobs in healthcare? I'm a phlebotomist and EKG technician. That's a great question. So USF Health actually has been partnering with us more and more on offering FWS opportunities for students who are bringing those types of certifications to school right out of high school. Um, and so again, if you stop by our office or you log on to Handshake or Careers at USF, you can certainly check for those opportunities. But we are working more with USF Health to make that possible. Great, I've got time. We've got about 30 seconds for a question from uh, Rajvi who asked, can we talk and discuss internship stuff with career services during orientation? Yes, so once you are a student and you're here, stop by our office and we are happy to help. All right, great. A question for me. Rachel asks, when is the Publix opening on campus? I know, not soon enough. I hear you students. It will be opening in the late fall semester or possibly in January. I don't have a date yet. I will let you know, but don't worry. I got the question answered. There will be Publix subs in the Publix. And so I know a lot of people want to know about that. And so, Peter, I think it's time to play another game. How about you? I think this is a good idea. All right, so let's meet our next contestant. Hey, what's your name? My name is Katie. Let's hear it for Katie, everybody. <laughs> so, Katie, Katie, tell me, where are you from? Palm City, Florida. From Palm City, Florida. And so we're really excited about this next game. Katie has no idea what's coming. And so we've named tonight's episode after this game. It's time to play Get a Job. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, I'm going to ask you a series of questions many of which Peter has already answered. You see what we did there? Yeah. <laughs> Our studio audience is here to help you out, Katie, and if you need to phone a Peter, well, he's sitting right next to you. So don't be shy. Okay, and so it is time to play. Let's go ahead and get our first question. Which course can first year and sophomore students take for academic credit to learn more about their potential career path? Is it A, job searching, B, Explore career pathways or C, path to success. Hmm. And you can help out, audience. Audience, what do you think it is? B. B. Okay, I'm going to go with B, explore career pathways. Are you sure? I'm sure. Okay, that is correct. Yay! All right. So, 
Tell us, Katie, our next question. Where is Career Services located? Is it A, the Student Services Building, B, Cooper Hall, or C, the Marshall Student Center? I'm going to go with A. Does everyone agree? Okay, A. All right. You are correct, Katie. <laughs> so, next question for you here. How many credits do you need to take per semester to be considered a full-time student? Is it A, 15, B, 9, or C, 12. All right, I'm seeing a lot of C's, so I'm going to go with 12. <laughs> C. Right. Is that your final answer? <laughs> yes. Well, that's the correct answer. Way Yay. to go. That was my, that was my terrible Regis. <laughs> I apologize to the viewing audience. Okay, so, uh, Katie, who are the student employees that help other students with interview preparation, resumes, and cover letters? Are they A, career peer advisors, B, career ambassadors, or C, career readiness and academic peer mentors? No one? <laughs> wow. No one in our audience has got right. it for you? C? C? Oh, we're, phone, we're, we're phoning Peter. We're going to go. Peter didn't ask you to phone him. <laughs> He's jumping right in. We're going to go with A, career peer advice. That is correct. It's A. Great job, Katie. You have used one phone of Peter. Okay, so we're moving on. Next question. What does the initialism FWS stand for? Is it A, Florida Wellness Services, B, Federal Work Study, or C, Florida Work Study? B, Federal Work Study. That is correct. All right. So, how many hours of college credit do you typically gain from an internship course? Is it A, 1 to 3, B, 3 to 9, or C, 2 to 6? A? A, one to three. That is correct. A, one to three. Great job. Wow, you are on fire. This is excellent. So, what is the name of the portal that helps you find jobs, internships, and co-ops? Is it A, Handshake, B, Bulls Business, or C, Work a Bull? A, a Handshake. That's correct. It's Handshake. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So, here we go. Another question for you. So, Katie, what is the name of the portal that helps you find on-campus jobs at USF? Is it A, Careers at USF, B, Employable, or C, Bull Careers? A, <laughs> a Careers at USF. That's correct. It is A. Way to go. All right. Show her some love, audience. She got that right, all right? There you go. All right. So... Katie, what are the two main types of internships? A, internal and external, B, university and corporate, or C, paid and unpaid? C. C, C. paid and unpaid. C is correct, paid and unpaid, the two types of internships. Very good. Not one wrong answer so far, Katie. This is intense, so here we go. What is the name of the career services event happening on September 20th? Is it A, Bulls Connect Career Fair, B, accounting career fair, or C, part-time job fair. Take, take some time. Think about this one. What do you guys think it is? A, A, A Bulls Connecting are you sure? Fair. Are you sure you want to go with the audience on this one? I think so. <laughs> well, you are correct, Katie. All right. So, now tell me, what is the name of the week-long series of events designed to help students prepare for career fairs? Is it A, know before you go? B, prepare for success, or C, career cram session? B. I seemed a little stumped. Um, B. Going with B? Prepare for success. All right. It is not prepare for success. <gasps> oh. oh. Now, let's practice our audience. We got the question wrong. It is not B, audience. Boo. Oh. <laughs> I like how they're kind of, are you booing me? They're like, oh my gosh. So Peter, Peter can tell us what was the correct answer, Peter. It is no before you go. No before you go. Thank you very much, Peter. It's, it's only one, one wrong answer. We'll be okay. And so our next question for you here, this could be a tough one. What is the phone number for career services? Is it, is it, hey, they can't all be, okay, so. Is it A, 813-974-0001, the housing phone number, or B, 813-974-9007, or C, 974-2171? C. C is correct. You got that one right, Katie. Now, tell me, what is the name of the career services event happening on August 30th? Is it A, career kickoff cookout, B, part-time job fair, or C, Bulls Connect Career Fair. 
A, career kickoff cookout. Okay, that is incorrect. I am so sorry. Peter told incorrect. me that one. Peter? Oh, wait, that's right. We reversed those. That was Peter! Oh, the credit for that one. So. <laughs> Oh, Peter, you're losing the audience. Stay, stay seated, audience. Calm down over there. All right, so. so. Your kickoff cookout is the, 20, is the 28th, um, and that's our chance to come out and meet employers, and then our part-time job fairs on the 30th this year. We flipped the order for okay. those. Okay, so there will be a cookout. Yes, there will be a cookout. So do come out. That's free that's food, chance to meet employers. It, it, yes, so we had to flip those good this information year. and bamboozling, Katie. <laughs> that's okay. right. Sorry. So, Katie, tell me, what is the name of the walk-in job search coaching service available to all USF students? Is it A, Career Express? B, find a job 101, or C, career and internship shop. I'm going to go with A, Career Express. That's correct, Career Express. You got it. All right, last question for you here. When is National Student Employment Week celebrated? The fourth week of August, the second week of April, or C, the fourth week of September? B, second week of April. That is correct. You got it. Second week of April. Very good. And so, Katie... For being a big winner and also for getting bamboozled by Peter, you have won. We've got a fancy USF Seal pad folio coming to you right after the break Yay. here. So let's hear it for Katie for playing tonight. Great job. Great job. And so, folks, it's time for us to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. We take you on a journey into orientation and learn some tips that will help you transition to campus life. Stick around. We will be right back with more USF Housing Live right after this. Welcome to USF Nature Documentaries. I'm your host, Greg Bowers, and we're looking at the wild orientation leaders. As you can see, the orientation leaders are very good at grouping together students and making friends. That's how they lure you in close. Over there, you can see that is an invasive duck species that is known to attack and eat humans up to 85 pounds in weight, so please keep your children clear. We don't want to get too close. Please, no loud noises. There's one over there. They're yelling. You do a go bulls, and that will keep them calm so they don't charge you. Let's keep on moving. So it's fun to come disturb them because I'm not supposed to do any of the stuff that I'm doing right now. They hold up these signs, which is their mating call, where they look for other orientation leaders. Approach very slowly, and always maintain eye contact. Getting close to one. Don't startle it. Don't startle the orientation leader. Let's get closer. It's okay. I'm trained. I'm trained. Okay? If you have any food, you set it on the ground and step away. We don't have any food, and so we don't want to get too close to the orientation leader. But here's, here's how you show that you're a friend. Go Bulls! <laughs> you said Fulbright! Fulbright! I good. That's really good. If you will be living on campus, chances are you will have to move in. If you do not move in, you will not be living on campus. You will be somewhere else. There are a few things you need to know before you move in so you are ready when the big day arrives. Are you ready? First, visit usf.edu slash housing, select residential experience, then moving in. You will see web pages listed for each move in period. Select the link that applies to you and begin reading the information provided. We recommend reading from left to right, top to bottom. In this way, you will enrich your mind with move-in information. Being informed is important. We know that because we read it somewhere. Second, get renter's insurance. I'm a thunderstorm. This is not required, but it is important. If something happens to your stuff and you do not have renter's insurance, you will not be reimbursed for your stuff. If you do have renter's insurance, you will get a check in the mail so you can buy new stuff. Lastly, go shopping for things you need. You might not know what you need. That's okay, we do. On the move-in page you just read, there is a link to the move-in checklist. You can acquire the items on the list, then check the boxes to indicate that you have acquired each item. Good job, now you're one step closer to living the bull's life. Welcome back everyone, this is USF Housing Live and I'm your host Gregory Bowers. 
it is time to play our final game of the evening. So let's meet our next contestant. What's your name? Hi, I'm Leehee. Leehee, welcome to the program. Where are you from? Cooper City, Florida. If y'all don't know, it's from like Grape by Hollywood, Florida. All right, well, we're happy to have you here. Hey, what's your major? Um, marketing. All right, hey, that's a good major. I studied that too. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> Leehee, you're gonna play a game called Close Call. We will show you a series of extreme close-up photos, and you're gonna tell us what the object is in each photo. Audience, as always, you are welcome to help out. Are you ready to play, Leehee? Yeah. Okay, sure. here we go. Let's see our first picture. All right, and our audience can see it as well. Feel free to shout it out, audience, if you want to help out, Leehee. Right. What could that be? What could that be? Okay, I'm going to go with chair. Is desk. it? Okay, let's check. Audience is a desk. So, audience, do you think it's a desk? Help us out. Is it a desk? Okay, let's see what it was. That's right, armrest of a chair. Okay, that was close. That was that was really really close. Let's go. Okay, let's go on to our next one. Let's see our next image. We're gonna go ahead and put that up here. What do you think this is? Okay, is that the wrong one? Did we did we put up the winning one? Okay, so what is that, Leehee? Bottom of a chair. It is not the bottom of a chair. Um, audience, throw them out there. What do you think it is, audience? How about Leehee? Uh, so for our audience, they have a screen. They can see it right there. It's right down there. And so, Okay, Leehee, what's your best guess on this one? Metal part of something that I don't... Can opener. Okay, audience, audience, do you think it's a can opener? Yeah. All right, let's see what it was. All right. That is a can opener. You got it. All right. Let's go on to our next one here. Okay. So let's see our next image. Let's put the photo up there for you. What do you think this is, Leehee? Oven mitt. Oven mitt. Oven mitt. You're saying it's an oven mitt. Let's check with our audience. Show a hand. How many say it's an oven mitt? Okay. Let's see what it was. What was that? All right. And it is an oven mitt. All right. Very good. Very good. Doing all right? All right, I got another one for you here, Leehee. Let's put up our next object. What could that be? Take your time. Someone yelled fake um, ice in a cup. Okay. Fake ice in a cup. So audience, do you think it's face, fake ice in a cup? Yeah. Let's see the big picture. Let's see what we got there. So yeah, that is. Now, it's like the real things, they exist, they are matter, but I guess, yeah, fake ice. So let's go ahead and put our next object up there for you. Okay. okay. What could this be? A desk organizer. Okay, audience, do you think it's a desk organizer? Yeah. All right, let's see the picture. What is it? Let's put it up there. See what we got. It is a desk organizer. Very good, Leehee, very good. Okay, I got another one for you. Let's put up our next close call image. All right, what could this be? This is a tough one. Okay, we heard a, a shameless plug for Ikea, okay. I'm gonna go with bookshelf. You're gonna say bookshelf. Audience, do you think it's a bookshelf? Oh, the, the audience doesn't seem to have a consensus on this. Let's see the big picture. Let's see what we got there. And so. That is a photo frame. It's a photo frame. That's a tough one, Leehee, right? Look, college is hard. Okay, so I've got another one for you we're putting up there. What could that be? Yeah, that's a backpack. Okay, so audience, is it a backpack? Yeah. Let's put the big image up there. Let's see. That is an official USF backpack. Would you like to take that backpack home with you today? All right, you have won that backpack. Let's hear it for Leehee, everybody. Oh, please, let's go. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. So it's time for us to speak with Monica Miranda, our next guest from the Center for Student Involvement. So, Monica, welcome back to the program. Thank you. It's great to be here again. I'm happy to have you here. And so tell us a little bit about what you do here at USF. 
So I get the honor and privilege to serve as the director for the Center for Student Involvement, and the center houses three kind of main areas, general involvement opportunities and involvement initiatives. We house Fraternity Sorority Life, as well as our events and programs and activities. And so today's focus is on getting a job. So how does the Center for Student Involvement assist students with that? So we like to say that the degree that students get here from USF will get them, or make them hireable, but their involvement in co-curricular activities and programs and events will make them promotable because of the skills that they do. So I think getting involved is what we do. It's getting students connected and involved on campus. And we also have about 35 student leader staff positions where we employ students to put on all the programs and be backstage at the concert for homecoming or um, putting on a lecture for the university lecture series. And so there's a lot of opportunity to work within our office as well. That's excellent. So you got to tell us a little bit about the types of involvement opportunities available to students here at USF. Oh, there's so many. We like to look at it as explore, connect, participate, and lead. We want students to explore the different opportunities. A student organization showcase is a great way to do that. Connecting with a student organization or connecting with a department that has opportunities for employment. Uh, as well in student leader opportunities there, participating in events, activities, and programs, and then leading. Maybe right even in this studio audience, we might have our next student body president. Oh, is that true? Let's see, audience, show of hands. Who's our next student body president? Do we have them out there? Okay. All right, that's a whole lot of presidents. <laughs> but I can see that we have, I mean, our students are really driven, really motivated, really hardworking. Aren't you bulls? You are hardworking bulls. Yeah. Pretty much everyone. And so um, you got to tell us a little bit more about fraternity and sorority life here. Well, we have about 49 organizations here, fraternities and sororities at USF. We have a Greek village that houses about 14 of those organizations. They really are focused on leadership and service, scholarship, and sisterhood, brotherhood, or siblinghood, uh, as we like to uh, use as well. And they do a lot of programs on campus that are open to all students. They raise a lot of money, uh, actually over $300,000 raised last year for different causes that are close to the hearts of the student members of those fraternities and sororities. Mm -hmm. And they put in a good a lot of amount of sweat equity in the community doing over $200,000, 200,000 hours of community service. That's incredible. And so if someone is not affiliated with those organizations, can they still be involved in some of the programs and, and initiatives they have going on? Absolutely. A lot of their programs are open. A lot of the fundraising activities are open to all students to attend. Uh, and there's definitely opportunities to go through recruitment and get more information about those organizations. Awesome. And so I got to ask you, what advice would you give someone uh, who is exploring ways to totally maximize their involvement experience here on campus. Well, shameless plug, they should come tomorrow to the Center for Student Involvement for the open house that we're having uh, from 11.30 to 1.30 p.m. in the Marshall Student Center 2300 and 2306. And then really just thinking about how they go through the pathway, how they're exploring, connecting, participating, and leading, and how they're doing that in a balanced way throughout the four years that they're here on campus. Awesome. So i got to ask you a little bit about your experience. So mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about how you were involved as an undergraduate student and how that impacted you in your professional career? So I really started with student organizations and getting involved with a student organization called Fuerza Latina at my undergraduate institution. And it was the Latino student organization. I became president of that organization. And then one of the things I said I would never do was to join a sorority, and I did, and I ended up making it a career. So I'm literally sitting in front of you, Greg, here because of the student involvement, because I was supposed to be a medical doctor, and that didn't quite happen. Medical school wasn't really a part of my trajectory, but when I got involved on campus, I realized what my passion was for life and for work, and so I ended up in higher education student affairs because of those student involvements. And so did you ever change your major as an undergrad? Uh, three times. And so that does happen. What are you going to say to those students who freak out and are like, I'm never changing my major? Don't freak out. You really have to do what you love. Uh, you have to kind of test out some things. College is an opportunity to learn and to grow and to try those new things and new adventures. And if you don't like the first major, there's going to be something else that you're going to like until you find what you're passionate about that you can spend the rest of your life doing as a career. Excellent. That's great advice. Thank you. Uh, what advice would you provide to parents and families about how they can best support their students' involvement here on campus? I think it's about being encouraging to them and asking them questions about what are they exploring, what are they, who are they connecting with, and what are they participating in. 
see the pathway again, really understanding that pathway of students needing to naturally explore when they first get here, make those connections, and asking them about who they're connecting with, what organizations they may be interested in, or what, are they, what did they never get to do in high school that they might want to try in college? And then that's where they help to channel them into that arena, and then that's where the student may find a student organization. Come to our office in the Center for Student Involvement, uh, again, MSD 2300, 20, uh, 2306 in the Marshall Student Center, and we can help point them in the right direction to finding the places and the spaces and the organizations and the departments that may help them find their passion. Excellent. Thank you. And so I got a question here. Normally we have all of our experts on the panel, but Peter, this might be for you. Nicole had just asked, are there federal work study jobs that will allow you to still work once you meet your awarded amount? So is it possible for students to work past their awarded amount? Do you happen to know the answer on that one? So the answer to that question is no. Once you've exhausted your federal work study, you can't continue in a federal work study job. Now, some offices on campus mm -hmm. will find additional funding in their budget to allow you to continue to work for their office, but if they don't have that money when your federal work study runs out, you're basically kind of out of a job at that point. So that's the one drawback to federal work study. Most of our students, though, don't spend their entire work, surprisingly. Um, you'll find that once you're trying to balance classes and work, you may, if you're doing it right, spending more time with your classwork <laughs> and those types of things, getting involved on campus, which is also really important. Um, and once you've done that, you may not have uh, the need to burn through all of, all of those dollars that are given to you through federal work study. That's great. Thank you. Peter from left field, everyone. All right, that's <laughs> excellent. We're right there in the audience. That's great. Um, and so that's excellent. And so are there opportunities for federal work study with Center for Student Involvement? Absolutely. We actually have anywhere between six and eight generally a year opportunities, excellent. six and eight positions. So students, you can just go to the Careers at USF website. Just Google USF Careers or Careers at USF, and it'll be right there in the top hits uh, in your search engine, and you can go ahead and follow that. And you can actually filter jobs by student jobs and FWS or federal work study jobs. Definitely check that out. Monica Miranda, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Let's hear it for her. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you coming back. And so, Bulls, I have got some news and updates for you. The Argos Dining Facility reopens this fall, and our friends in dining services need your help choosing a new name. Our team is posting a link to the survey in the comments as I speak so you can help us choose. So follow that link and help us figure out what we're going to call the Argos Dining Facility starting in the fall. For the first time, there will be hall councils for summer residents. If you live on campus right now, this is you. Start building your leadership skills today by getting involved with Bull Crew. Sign up at tinyurl.com slash bullcrew. Another new initiative happening this summer regards men in residence. Check your email for messages from the men in residence team. You could win a $250 book scholarship by participating, and also there are going to be experts coming into the halls to meet with you on July 2nd. So be ready and ask your RA if you want to learn more. On Friday, July 13th, from noon to 5, there will be a faculty and student field trip to the Dolly Museum and Tampa Theater. Not only are these awesome places to visit, but you will get to know a faculty member one-on-one. -on -one. Lunch will be provided, so see your resident assistant to learn more. Hey, are you good with money? Let's be honest, you can always be better. We all can. We are partnering with Bull to Bull to host a program at 11 a.m. on Tuesday, July 3rd in Juniper Poplar 1317 that will help you budget your financial aid refund check if applicable to your situation, of course. For those of you who want to learn to cook, Dining services will be coming into the residence halls this summer providing cooking demonstrations. You learn something and probably get free food too. So your RA can tell you when they will be visiting your specific residence hall. Now as you learned today, career services is an extremely important part of your student experience starting on day one. They will be joining you in the halls to offer help with setting goals and achieving them. Look for their table in the Juniper Poplar Lobby from 11 to 1 and 5 to 9 on July 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Join experts from the Center of Student Well-Being for the next Wellness Wednesday on July 11th at 5.30 p.m. Where will they be? Just ask your RA. Now there's an upcoming opportunity for you to gain new knowledge on the topics of intolerance, bias, privilege, and oppression on Tuesday, July 10th at 7 p.m., Real Talk Live will be streaming from our home studio, right here. Watch online or join your RA in the hall to watch on cable channel 5. Just like this show, you will be able to ask anything of the experts and host during the program. And finally, for the first time, final exam review sessions will be happening near the end of the summer B term. 
Take advantage of this extra boost right before your final exams. I gotta tell you, there is no better feeling than acing them. Well, folks, that is just about all the time we have. But before we go, I want to remind you that USF Housing Live airs every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, except for next Wednesday, July 4th. We will be celebrating Independence Day. We return on July 11th with our next episode, Bulls Can Fly, Study Abroad. You can watch at facebook.com slash USF Housing, the USF Class of 2022 Facebook group, or in full 1080p high definition at youtube.com slash USF Housing. US of Housing Live is produced by Housing and Residential Education at the University of South Florida in Tampa. Our motto is best place to live, best place to work, best place to learn. Thank you to tonight's guests, Devin Dittleberger, Peter Thorsett, and Monica Miranda for joining me this evening. Thank you to our production crew, our contestants, to you, our viewers. And of course, there is always just one last thing. Let's hear it, audience. Go, go!